Hello, welcome back to the garden. Today we're up in the woodland and I'm going to be sharing with you how you can fill a raised bed inspired by the Hugel culture method without using any compost or spending any money. Hugel culture. Now you may not be familiar with the name but you probably are familiar with the method in some sort or another and essentially Hugel culture is a way of being able to use um, lots of compostable materials from your garden to create a really healthy bed. If you were to do the um, kind of proper method, you do something like dig a one foot hole, a rectangular hole in the ground, move all the soil to one side, fill that, you know, with lots of logs and then other compostable materials over the top put the soil back over, you end up with a mound um, and then as it kind of rots down, those logs rot down over years, it will then feed all of those plants. So it's a really good way of making a kind of low maintenance bed. Um, but I actually use that method when I filled this back in 2019. So. Um, Back in 2019, I created a raised bed garden up here in the woodland and I had a lot of raised beds that needed to be filled and I didn't want to spend hundreds of pounds on buying in compost. Compost that I didn't know where it had come from, I didn't know what chemicals would be in it and, you know, I didn't really have a budget of hundreds of pounds. So this bed here became my first hugel culture and I really loved creating it. First thing I put in was lots of logs from um, the woodlands around me. Then I put twigs, sticks. I used some of my homemade compost, my worm co compost, leaves and bits and pieces and created this amazing bed. <laughs> You're probably wondering now why, if I created such a beautiful bed back in 2019, does it look like this now? And that is because um, last year I built my polytunnel here, but when I was first building it, I thought I would need to move the two raised beds that I've got at the very front, but it worked out I had enough room. But unfortunately, I'd already half emptied this at the time before I realised I had enough room. But it what didn't kind of go to waste really because I was able to film what it looked like underneath and have a look and it was brilliant. I couldn't believe how good this bed had performed and how good it was. Um, Having these really big logs in here was amazing because all of these logs were full of so much water and all of the um, plant roots were kind of wrapped around it. So it was absolutely brilliant. And in a time now where we're being more environmentally friendly and thinking about ways to save water, this is an amazing method. I'm ashamed to say, since I emptied that bed back last year, it sat there exactly as it is. I was so busy trying to sort the polytunnel out that I've left it. And it's not until last week when I harvested my potatoes from the other side that I realised I really need to get this bed back in action. It's in shade most of the day, but potatoes will grow there and quite successfully. So if I can get that sorted this year with um, the Hugel culture method, Hopefully, by about March next year, we're going to have some really lovely compost that potatoes will grow in really nicely. Because the logs are already at the bottom of the bed, I don't need to worry about adding any of those today. So what I'm going to be doing is using grass clippings and brown waste. Uh, the brown waste is hedge clippings um, and twigs and things like that that were cut down earlier this year and they've been left in a big bag um, just drying out and starting to rot down a little bit but not very much. So when I add those in and kind of mix together, they should then compost down really nicely and make some lovely soil in time for March next year. I'm going to use about three parts brown to one part green but all of the green the grass clippings are still attached to the ground so I better get on now and start mowing them so we can get on and build this bed. That's the woodland mode now, so ready for the first layer. I apologise about the camera angle, but you can see that today is a really bright day. So hopefully you can see okay. Um, if you're wondering what this metal thing um, in the shot is, that is a rose arch, which to be honest has seen better days, but that is staying here for now. 
So what I'm going to be doing, because I've already got a lovely layer of um, compost and obviously all of these um, logs here, I'm going to put the grass clippings over the top of this. Then I'm going to put the brown waste over the top and then I'm going to go down and do some more mowing so we can then layer it up that way. That spread nice and evenly there. So now for the brown. It looks pretty bulky now, but over the next kind of six or so months, as it rots down, it's going to flatten really, really nicely and hopefully provide some really lovely soil. And as you can see here, it's already started rotting down. It's nice and damp here. So this is going to be such a lovely bed. Right, off to get some more grass clippings. now we're getting pretty high so I'm going to do one final layer of grass clippings for the day and that should get this started off pretty nicely. There you go that is the last layer added on today. If I had more grass clippings, I probably would be tempted to add a few more layers on today and mound it up quite high. Um, but I don't know if you can see from here, it's already over the very top of that raised bed. So it won't take long for that to kind of settle down. And over the next couple of months, while I continue to mow about once a month, I can just add a few more layers onto that. Now, you might be wondering why I'm showing you this kind of in the process rather than doing a video in March when it's already completed and made lovely, beautiful compost ready to grow my potatoes in. But I'm showing you it now because we are not even in autumn yet, we're in the middle of the summer. And if you've got any areas of your garden that are just like patches of lawn or an old raised bed, or you're making a new raised bed, this is the perfect time to actually start something like this so you can have it filled and ready for the next growing season. You may also be wondering why I haven't been adding compost as I've gone. Like I did when I originally made that Hugel culture bed, you saw that I was adding compost, um, worm castings and things like that. And the reason for that is I'm not planting anything in it now. So I think it's a little bit of a waste. And when it comes to planting time, if I need to add anything else, I can add it then. Um, but that brings me on to the end of the video. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's video and it's maybe inspired you to get something like that going in your own garden. And and this is an area here down the side of the polytunnel that I don't think anyone's ever seen before. Um, maybe, you know, in the background and things. But this area here is where I am actually going to be doing the same thing as I've just done there. A six metre bed all the way along um, this side of the polytunnel. Now, it's mid-afternoon now. I'm in direct sunlight. But again, this area doesn't get full sunlight all day. So it's a very shady area. Um, but I'm hoping to make a kind of one metre deep, six metre bed here, which I'll be able to grow potatoes in next year. So I'm going to be filming that as I go along and um, the same similar process as I've done today so hopefully when it comes to planting time in March you'll have a really amazing video from start to finish of how easy it is to create one of these beds. Thanks so much for watching I really hope you've enjoyed watching today's video if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos please do hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you be notified of all of my latest videos. As ever YouTube have some videos up now on the screen that they think you're like so please go ahead and watch those and I'll catch up with you in the next episode. Bye!